Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you all today. So as the legendary musician uh, Bob Marley once said, one good thing about music, once it hits you, you feel no pain. So music is actually a powerful tool. Every one of us has a favorite track that reminds me of a memory or have an emotion that's sadness or happiness or even hopeful. It is these power of melodies that can inspire us. So the power of music is undeniable. And what we were trying to do here today with the climate machine is utilizing this power of music to get masses behind the idea of climate action. It is something that's truly unique. It can unite us all. As a universal language, music has the power to link bridges between different cultures, races, and gender. So in the climate machine, we're trying to ask the question, how can we leverage the power of music and art using technologies to get people engaged in climate action? We had so many questions that we had to ask first. First one, how can we actually talk to people about climate without really making them feel bad that they're not doing anything to the planet? Especially, it was more challenging working in a music festival setup. So in a music festival, imagine seeing an MIT professor talking to 2,000 people who left the main stage with two big artists performing just to listen to climate. So this is something that we got to witness last year through the climate machine. What you see here on the screen, these cute avatars, are called the climates. So climate, very smart. And these climates, we developed it to link as a digital twin. In the age of social media, Instagram, Facebook, all these platforms, you need something that you can share with other people. And we want the climate to look cool somehow. So with the climates, you actually get the identity of what type of climate knowledge that you're mostly interested in. And as a result, that could give you recommendations on what are the actions that are suitable to your interest. We were, we were privileged to work with a music community called Anjuna Family through our collaboration with an electronic music label called Anjuna Beats and Anjuna Deep. So these people you see on the screen are people in actual music festival who took the decision to leave the music venue and learn about climate. We ran this quiz over five music festivals last year with 1,000 participants creating these climate communities, people who are interested and excited about solving climate problems. Speaking about communities, we wanted to leverage the collective power of these communities in understanding climate perception in the public. So we asked the question, how can we understand the future of climate from the public perception without asking questionnaires, doing interviews? So we use AI art generator. So these images you see here are images created by actual people in a workshop setup with 60 participants. And as you might expect, you can get some dark vision of the future, but also some people were really optimistic. We asked them to tell us how they can actually see the future of climate, whether it's in the near future, the far future. What's, what's most, more interesting to us that you can see that some of these images are really optimistic in the near future. And these were the kind of people that we really want to work with. They can become the climate ambassador who can push the collective actions toward climate. Also, we're using AI art to give some idea and awareness about the impacts of climate on indigenous groups. This video is created by our group with an original music composition on the impacts of climate on indigenous group in Africa. We're also working with a native tribe here in the US, reflecting their impact on climate through their relationship with culture and identity. They have a very unique relationship with nature, and we wanted to capture this in a unique way, giving them voice through the use of music and art. We're also working on a very large scale. Two weeks ago, we ran this experience here at MIT, projecting on the building behind me, the new music building, basically giving MIT an electronic dance party, but it was actually telling them about sharing their vision of the climate, 
these footages you see is actually from the live performance we had behind Krisgi. We had around 100 people coming on and off and asking, like, what is this? What are you guys trying to do here? Is this like a rave party? So actually, people were really interested to know that we use that as a climate canvas to get people to know about issues about biodiversity and climate action. And we want to do more of this also in a music festival, not just with an MIT. So this is not just a, a one-person effort. There is a big team behind this who are really passionate about going forward to push climate action. I mean, they're really lucky. They go to a music festival for doing research. <laughs> and above all, the great mind who's driving this group, Professor John Fernandez, who's actually the main reason why we're doing this work. When I went to him two years ago, saying, like, I have this crazy idea to work with music labels, he went for it. And this is actually why we're doing this work today. Finally, I want to conclude with this person that we met through a music festival, Jackie. She is a second grade teacher by day. By night, she calls herself the rave mama. <laughs> she has been going to music festival for over 20 years. And she got inspired by all the work we're doing in Climate Machine. And now she's sharing this message with her students. She always tells us now, you got to teach them young. And yes, this is what we need to do. We need more people like Jackie who can become ambassadors for climate action and can inspire their students to work for the better of the planet. Thank you so much.